Have you ever thought about the singles tax? Recently, I stumbled across a show talking about the cost of being single. And I was super intrigued by it because it's something I've always kind of thought about. I mean, you hear women talk about the pink tax, how so many products for women are higher cost, but they're the same kind of product as they are for a man with a different label and they cost significantly less. Well, that also pertains to on a different degree for people that are single. And, you know, when COVID hit and people were all nervous about living at home, jobs were changing, situations were different. They kind of moved in together a lot faster, that's for sure. And something that I think brought that forward was the feeling of financial unknown, work-wise, what was going to happen. And then they started to realize it's kind of nice having somebody split the electric, split some of the grocery expenses, somebody to eat at home with when you kind of had to stay home, somebody to, you know, share in the rent and whether it's the cable stations, the streaming stations, whatever it is, there's little logistics of our day that are nice to be able to save. Obviously, there's the real taxes that are different if you are in a head of household versus a single household. And there's also just the cost of, you know, you can often have one car and share a car with your partner. There are so many costs to being the person who is responsible for everything, making all the food, having the home, cleaning the home, paying for the home, all of those things. And so I'm curious, what kind of singles taxes have you felt that have been real or frustrating that you've had to deal with? Obviously, it's cheaper to be on a cell phone plan with multiple people. It's cheaper to have multiple people on a car insurance plan. I mean, there's a lot of avenues that it's just expensive to do it all on your own all of the time. It doesn't mean somebody else is necessarily paying your way, but if there was somebody contributing towards it in the sense that expenses, like it costs the same to heat your home, whether there's one or two people for the most part, but yet if there were two people splitting that cost, it would be nice. Now the heat fills the rooms just the same. It might cost a little extra because somebody cooked more than the other one, but pretty much the cost is going to be the same whether there's one or two of you there. And then there's also just the cost of doing things in the sense that you often live in a bigger city when you are single. If you have a family and you've got children, you're going to live in the suburbs where often the cost of living is a little bit less. So there's a different type of lifestyle that comes with being single. And there is a different lifestyle that comes once you're in a relationship. Of course, there are plenty of families that live in the city and there are plenty of single people that live in suburbia or out where they, you know, don't have the city nightlife going on. But it's more common that you're going to see single people in a high density population area because they want to go out more. They also want to meet more people and they're much more into being social with a broader variety of people. So I think it's interesting to stop and think about and acknowledge that it's expensive to be single, but then <laughs> there is also the cost of being in an expensive relationship. And there are people that are expensive to date. There are emotional aspects. There's vulnerability aspects. There are lots of aspects that can make dating and singlehood kind of you know, which do you want to do better? There's a lot of independence that comes with being single. And yes, the cost is more, but you also get control of the remote control. You get control of the bed. You don't have to have anybody snoring nearby. You don't have to worry about somebody eating your last bite of your favorite treat in the fridge that you were saving for the next day. You don't have to wonder, um, you know, is anybody going to go get more groceries or is it you? Or you never have to sit down and have the toilet paper missing or you know, that one little piece of toilet paper on the roll. You know, there's so many little things 
things both ways. We can go for positives and we can go for the negatives, but there's a tax to just life and vulnerability. So I'm curious, what single taxes have you incurred? Which ones would you like to get rid of? Which ones are you like, hey, this is worth the cost of being single. I'm good with it. I'm super excited to hear from you. I want you to comment and subscribe. I want to keep this conversation going. And I'm just curious, what are your single tax perspectives?